start a new one today. It's going to be my steak stir fry. And I bought a bunch of this steak because it is top sirloin steak. And it was on sale for $4.99 a pound. So I bought 10 pounds of it. We're not going to do 10 pounds today, but you can be, you'll be seeing that steak coming up for the next video or two. So what I have here is I have two pounds of steak. Sirloin is very lean, so I'm not going to trim this. But what I thought I would do is thinly slice this using my meat slicer for the stir fry. So I put this in the freezer for about 30 minutes, and we are just going to slice this up. By putting it in the freezer for that short time, it just makes it uh, a little bit firmer for slicing. So we're just going to run this through. Okay, so that's my meat all sliced up. Let's get this put away. Okay, now for the marinade. I'm going to put, see what I got here. One cup of soy sauce. And see how much Worcestershire sauce I got in there left. One cup of Worcestershire sauce. We will pour that over all this meat. Before I dig my hands in there, I'm going to go ahead and get me a, some clean film off to cover that. Alright, so let's give that a little mix in there. Make sure everything's coated. Very well. And we're going to cover that. that in the fridge for several hours maybe even overnight would be better so we'll see you once that's marinated okay we have marinated that for about four hours it would be even better if I did it overnight but time is of the essence let's get that out of the way for a minute cook up our beef Okay, I'm going to set this marinade aside because we're going to use that later. Put this on high. Start. We're going to cook this meat up until it is done. Okay, that steak's about done. We are going to pull that steak out. And set that aside. Mm. That's got beautiful flavor. Okay, I have two cups of onion. And about four cloves of minced garlic. I'm going to throw it in, those in there. And 
saute those until the onions are starting to get translucent. Okay, it's been going about seven minutes. They are starting to get translucent. So, I have about four carrots that I kind of cut in rough mash sticks. One cup of carrots. And I think that's about four stalks of celery, small stalks, diced up. And two red bell peppers diced up. And we are going to cook these up for a minute. While those are cooking, I have a bottle of this oyster sauce. And you want to be careful when you use this because it's very salty and you can overdo it. It can be overpowering. But I am going to put two tablespoons of oyster sauce in there. I got one bag of 13 ounces of uh, frozen sweet peas, baby sweet peas. They're the sweetest. looking good. Look at all that color. I got two bags of 10 ounces each of sugar snap peas. Frozen. I am going to cover that, turn the heat down to medium, and I'll keep an eye on that, keep stirring it. If I need to add more liquid, I'll take liquid from my marinade and add to that to keep it nice and moist. And we're going to cook that until everything in there is nice and tender. Okay, while that's waiting to come up to temperature, I'm digging through my pantry and I found another can of the stir fry baby corn and I love that stuff so we are going to throw that in with it. Just add a little touch to that. And another more color. Yellow pretty corn. It seems to be moist enough in there so far so we'll leave it like it is for now. I'm going to cook this until those carrots are tender. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes on that heat. It took a while for the uh, frozen stuff to come up to temperature. But the carrots are tender, but not mushy tender. Which is kind of what I'm looking for. So I am going to go ahead and add... the meat back into it. And while we're doing that, 
I'm going to go ahead and put this marinade in there. We'll get that up to boiling. And I'll decide whether or not I want to put a little corn starch slurry in there and thicken it up a little bit. Stop that, John. Quit eating that meat. That's good. Okay, I'm going to let that all come up to a boil. And I'll see you then. Okay. That has come up to a boil and reheated nicely. Now you definitely want to bring that up to a boil because of that marinade had raw meat sitting in it for several hours. So you definitely want to bring it up to a boil before you call it good. Now I could add some cornstarch to that and thicken that up, but here's my thought process. If I pour that over my tray once I get it filled up, whatever juice is left over, split it up between the trays. Then when I reconstitute that juice will get sucked into everything that re rehydrates. So it should add a lot of flavor to it. So I'm not going to thicken it up. We're going to do it just like that. Let me turn this off. Got my tray zeroed out. Let's see what we can get on there. Does that look good? I sure think it does. I'm hoping to get three trays. We we'll call that two and a quarter pounds. That'll leave me some weight room for the juice if I have any left over. So, two and a quarter pounds. Let me set this off to the side. I'll do hopefully two more trays of this. And once it's cooled down, we'll get it in the freeze freezer. And once it's frozen solid, into the freeze dryer. I'll see you when it comes out. Okay, just before I put this away. So I ended up taking some off to balance them out. Ended up with about 2.1 pounds per tray. Now I'm just going to ladle this stuff over. With juice over. Get that nice and moist. And when that rehydrates, that should be full of flavor. Okay, one more thing to do. Let's get this divided up. into portions. That'll just make it a little bit easier once we get it out of the freeze dryer to break that up into a nice bite size or serving size portions. All right. Like I say, I'll let this cool down. We'll get it frozen solid and into the freeze dryer. I'll see you then. I'll see you when it comes out. Okay, there we have it. 12 servings of beef stir fry. Let's get her packaged up. As always, I'm going to put those in the bag and ziplock them shut, especially during the summer. And then we'll go back once they're all packaged and we'll open them back up, open my O2 absorbers and put a 300cc 
O2 absorber. But we want to get this out of the humidity as quick as we can. So I'll see you once we've got this all packaged up. Okay, we got all 12 packages vacuum sealed. And uh, that was three trays. And I normally do, if I use three trays, I do a tray of eggs or a tray of milk to finish filling the freeze dryer. So what we have here is from two, two different loads, one tray each load, is 36 eggs. Three dozen eggs in a half gallon jar, all crushed up. And the way I do mine, I don't put them in the blender. I put them in a Ziploc, gallon Ziploc bag and I use my rolling pin and just roll them out to crush them up that way. So, if you're interested in how I vacuum seal these, I don't use the freeze dryer. And the reason I don't use my freeze dryer is because number one I have to defrost the freeze dryer before I can vacuum seal then I gotta dry it all out pull the rack out un disconnect the wires from the uh, the rack and I don't like disconnecting those wires unless I have to like when I clean I'll just pull the rack out and let set it on a stool below the machine and clean it that way unless I have an explosion then I gotta do it in the sink and then I gotta disconnect the wires but I don't like disconnecting those wires unless I have to so what I use is a vacuum chamber and I've done a couple of videos so just to let you know if you go to my channel and look in my videos list you can search vacuum should come up under vacuum uh, I've done a video demonstrating the jars and how I do my mylar bags it's really simple really quick it's a little bit expensive I mean but it's not as expensive as a vacuum chamber and uh, I just can't afford a vacuum chamber when you know the big vacuum chambers with that vacuum and seal at the same time so I use what's called a vacuum chamber and use that to vacuum them and then I seal in my normal harvest right style impulse sealer so you might be interested in checking those videos out but it does a really really good job as you can see so let me get these put away out of the way and we'll do a taste test okay so today I'm gonna to call this surf and turf we're gonna use our scallop fried rice that I made earlier in a previous video We put a half a cup in there, if I remember right, and that came out pretty good. And that's what we're going to do this time. good when I was packaging this just see where we where we go because I don't want it too runny I do want it a little bit saucy though all right so I'm just gonna leave that sit for two minutes and I'll see you in two minutes Okay, that's been two minutes. 
Let's give this a stir. Definitely smell the seafood in it. This in this one. Scallops, fried rice. That shut. That's it for another two minutes. Give this one a stir. Now we might end up adding some more water to this one. Although I do see some moisture still down in there. Let me get a piece of steak out of there. See how that's coming along. Remember, I cut this very thin. Yeah, that's gonna be good. All right, two minutes. Okay, it has been two minutes, so let's dish this out. I'm hungry. Okay, that's my surf. Let's make a nice little bed to put that beef in. There's the surf. Let's get out the turf. We ain't leaving any of that in there. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Check that out. Man, that looks delicious. Can you hear my stomach growling? <laughs> Let's get a nice close-up of that one. It looks pretty. Let's do a taste test. Surf and turf. John and Bib style. Mmm. That was a bit of the rice with the scallops. Definitely got a seafood taste of that. Let's get some steak in that. Oh my gosh. That is delicious. Kind of disappointed with the texture of my scallops. Mmm. That is so good. Because they don't rehydrate quite as well as that beef did. That beef just came out perfect. Mmm. This is delicious. You guys are going to love this one. Mmm. That stir fry beef is absolutely gorgeous. I knew it would be because I couldn't keep from eating it when I was train it up mm. a little bit of the uh, scallops which has got great flavor it's just a little bit chewy and my goal I can let that rehydrate for a lot longer but as you know, guys know, my goal is to make meals that I can eat on the go. Do it quickly, rehydrate it quickly, and eat it. Ain't nothing I would change with this, I don't think. 
other than try and solve that scallops. I'm, I'm sure if I use like lobster or anything like that, it'd have the same problem with shrimp as well. It takes a while to reconstitute. Actually, shrimp, I know from experience, you really want to rehydrate that in cold water. I think if you got the shrimp, that's like 250 per, per pound, which is a really, really tiny shrimp for like salads, that might work all right as well. But I like this. I mean, the, the scallops are nice. They're just a little bit chewy. Mm. And the flavor of this dish is spot on. They complement each other very well. I was kind of worried whether I'd have enough there for a meal, but actually it's quite quite a lot there, really. And if you were on the go, I plated this up, but if you were on the go, you could rehydrate those separately in each pouch and then just combine them into one pouch and eat it from the pouch. But I think you agree. It presents very well on a plate. Well, that is a new success from John and Bibbs. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.